Recording in progress. Hello, Dr. Maya Kinsigler of Monarch Family Chiropractic, and welcome to our workshop this week. We are talking about uh, your foundation. How stable is your foundation? How does your foundation impact the rest of your structure and your body? Uh, we are, you know, uh, <clears throat> biped beings. We are walking on two feet. And so how our feet meet the ground and how that force that um, is incurred as we meet that ground um, and impacts the kinetic chain, which is the ankles onto the knees, onto the hips, and how we move in space. Uh, our foundation is absolutely vital for um, maintaining health, structural health, alignment and balance. Uh, so I think this is a great workshop uh, to dive right in. So everything is connected. Uh, you mentioned, or you heard me mention the kinetic chain. That is basically the chain of uh, how our body meets the ground. Uh, so it starts at the foot, moves to the knee, moves to the hip, moves onto the spine, moves to the neck. So all parts of your body are linked together and your feet are the foundation. Uh, and this is from Foot Leveler. So this is from a company that we are using for uh, our uh, custom orthotics. So even though all of your body parts are connected and affect one another, your feet are what we at Foot Levelers call the foundation. Your entire body is supported and balanced by your feet. Therefore, if your feet are pronated, and pronate, pronated means collapsed, means flattened, um, <clears throat> means dropped. Uh, so if your feet are pronated, which 99% of people's feet are, your body will st suffer, starting with either the knee, the hip, or the back. So when something goes wrong with one of our parts and we experience pain, traditional medical doctors attempt to treat patients using you know, prescription meds or surgery. And this, in our opinion, is very narrow view of solutions and care, uh, which we agree. Uh, we want to look at what is the conservative approach to supporting a body better expressing itself uh, when it comes to your the, the health of your musculoskeletal system. Yes, we focus on the spine, but what impacts the spine? That's that kinetic chain. So that's why we go to the feet. So here's some foundation or some facts about your feet. You have 206 bones in your body. 52 bones are in your feet alone. That's 26 in each foot. So 20% of all of your bones are found in your foundation. There are 33 joints within uh, each foot and 107 ligaments. That's a lot. Uh, so if you have faulty mechanics with how your feet are reaching the ground, if you have pronation or flattening that's happening, it impacts how those joints are moving, impacts how those ligaments are getting motion. Um, and so it can impact quite a bit of that kinetic chain. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we used to have no shoes, right? We used to walk around barefoot. Um, and you think about um, when we walk around barefoot, back in the caveman days, uh, we were walking around on natural surfaces. There was nothing man-made. So we were walking around on dirt, on grass, on rocks, on surfaces that would rise up to engage our feet and our arches. And that would support healthy uh, input into our body. In fact, uh, proprioception, so that is considered the sixth sense um, after visual input, sensory input of smell, touch, hearing, um, <clears throat> taste. Uh, movement or proprioception is the next biggest one. Uh, and so um, that's where, you know, I put my arm behind my back and I, I know where it is, not because I can smell it or taste it or see it. I just know where my body is in space. That's proprioception. So you've got proprioceptive cells that are constantly feeding our brain uh, to better understand where our body is in space. We have a lot of proprioceptive cells in at the bottom of our feet. Um, the only area of the body that has more than that is at your cervical spine at C1. Okay. Otherwise, every joint of the body has proprioceptive input. Um, at the feet have majority, then at the knees, the hips, all along the spine, the shoulder, you know, every joint. Uh, and so when you're walking on natural surfaces that rise up to meet our feet, um, that's giving your body so much sensory input to help 
understand where your body's in space. Um, and so that was vital for the health of our structure. Um, and which one of these is not like the other, right? If somebody who is barefoot walking on the beach, which is where I want to be, <laughs> you have uh, a group of people around a fire in the winter, they're also barefoot back in the day. And then what do we see here? We see tennis shoes on athletes. When did that happen? Uh, the first shoe was invented. Um, the world's oldest leather shoe made from a single piece of cowhide laced with leather cord. Along seams at the front and back was found in the Areni Cave complex in Armenia in 2008 and is believed to date back to 3500 BC. The shoes developed due to environmental needs. Alexander the Great conquered the world with barefoot armies. The Romans were the first to design separate shoes to the right and left foot, issuing these to their soldiers. Uh, made by a cobbler as time went on, and there was no standardized sizing system until the 19th century. So yes, we started seeing shoes uh, early on, 3500 BC. What was it made of? It was made of natural, um, <clears throat> natural materials. Um, and, I mean, could you imagine fighting a war barefoot? <laughs> so it wasn't until much later on that shoes were developed to be very specific between the right and the left foot. And early in the 1900s, um, you had cobblers who would make a shoe for you specifically um, <clears throat> for your left foot and your right foot. And those would last for a long time. And when you needed to uh, get an update, you sent, you brought them back to the cobbler and they updated them based on your size and your needs. So we had shoes very specific to each individual for years. And so uh, when we have, you know, um, production taking place to uh, create a shoe sizing system and massive production to, you know, have this one shoe fit multiple feet, uh, it's just a very different input that our body's getting. Um, so in 1856, when we get the first known hard document documented instance of uh, a third inch increments in a shoe sizing system. You know, again, you think about where we came from, being barefoot for our entire life to, you know, we have kiddos, babies, we're putting in, you know, shoes, putting in booties. Um, you know, we are wearing shoes or booties from a very young age, walking on man-made surfaces um, throughout our entire lifetime. Uh, so our bodies and brains, our feet are looking very different than they did, you know, a hundred years ago, 200 years ago. I mean, our entire existence, they look very different. So how is that impacting, uh, how is that impacting the health of our body? So when we look at the importance of your foundation, number one, it absorbs and disperses energy. It creates support to natural architecture and it provides stability. When you have better stability, you have better alignment. So um, the biggest, you know, we have three arches and we'll, we'll get into the arches in a second, uh, but we look at what is the cause of pronation or flattening of those arches? Number one, um, <clears throat> our feet need a natural surface to constantly be engaging our arches to support healthy, uh, stability and ligamentous support. So if we are never really on a natural surface and we are on man-made surfaces, that uh, shifts our arches to drop proning. Um, and we put our feet in shoes. And again, we're never really getting any type of um, good proprioceptive input to support a healthy foot from the start. So <clears throat> here's an orthotic. And I just want you to see um, you know, uh, the arches that we're talking about. So the first arch to flatten, we've got three arches. The first arch to, arch to flatten when you start to have pronation is this lateral arch here. <coughs> okay, so we have a lateral arch. Then we have a transverse arch, 
which supports our metatarsals. And it goes across the foot. Think about it as the ball of the foot. <clears throat> the last arch to flatten, and it's the highest arch, is this medial arch. Okay, so it's this inside one right here. So oftentimes we are looking at what most people know is just this inside arch. And when you go to get some uh, arch support, if it's a Dr. Scholl's or something that's mass produced, it's really just supporting this medial arch, this internal arch here. Um, and what did we just find out? That by the time this is uh, dropping, these have all totally collapsed through here. And so if we're just supporting this, we're, we're leaving a lot out in terms of supporting the health of our arches. Um, <clears throat> so um, we really want to assess and understand, you know, what is the health of your feet at the start and how does it overall impact what you're experiencing in terms of your structural health? Um, and so sometimes we can see people who have low back pain, it is coming from the feet or the feet are a big contributing factor. So when we look at the five red flags as to whether or not you'd benefit or need some foundational support. Number one in our office is we do a postural assessment. So we're gonna see, do we uh, assess you if we see foot flare? Are we seeing your feet you know, open up and rotate out? Are you flaring out? Okay, when you flare out, it can cause internal knee rotation. So do we see the knees shifting in some, you know, internally? Uh, we also look at, I wish I had a pair of shoes, but if you take your shoes and take a look at the heels of them on the outside, okay, you're going to look here and you're going to compare your right to left and you're going to see, do I see more wear happening on one side compared to the other? When you look at right compared to left, okay? So again, I don't have a good picture here, but let's see if you can see when I'm looking at this. Here are my shoes. And as you're looking, oh, this isn't a very, I'm not doing a very good job here. I'm looking at that wear pattern. See how they have that emblem? Okay, how it's a square or a rectangle. You can see I've got more wear and tear on this side of this outer portion. So I'm really looking at right along here, right there. See how that's nice and square on that side and how I'm getting more wear right along here. So I have more wear along my right side, even though I have, um, even though I wear orthotics. So it's telling me I have wear on both sides, um, but more through that left side compared to the right side. Um, so that looks at my gait cycle and how I'm moving, how aligned am I as I'm um, <clears throat> weight bearing. Okay, um, let me go back to sharing my screen here. Okay, so we're looking at the outside wear of the shoes. So you're gonna take off your shoes or look at a pair of shoes that you're wearing all the time and look at those heels and see, you know, are you seeing a um, wear pattern happen? Both sides, one side, are they um, different between the two? <clears throat> we also look if there's a flat foot, okay? Now, a flat foot for somebody is really going to flatten them out um, in, you know, as their feet are going to move in, then we can sometimes see that it bows the Achilles. So your Achilles uh, can bow. So if we see any of those indicators, one or all five, those may be, um, you know, indicating that you need a, a more detailed assessment to understanding, you know, what's happening at your feet. Now, here's what I'll say. I think it is absolutely critical that you are spending time on natural surfaces. You are getting good activation of your arches. I'm not in one camp or the other, like you need to be totally barefoot or you need to be in an orthotic. The reality is, is we live in, live in a um, industrialized world. We're walking around in synthetically made surfaces, asphalt, cement, wood floors. <clears throat> None of those surfaces are engaging our arches in a healthy way. 
So <clears throat> while you need to be spending some healthy um, barefoot time outside on natural surfaces, the reality is that you're spending a lot of time likely uh, on synthetic surfaces. So um, I think you need to have a combination of both to really understand, uh, to really give your feet the healthy support that it needs. Uh, and so we start with a 3D scan in our office and we review that scan. We review your x-rays. We look at your posture. We look for these red flags and then we assess, okay, what is the appropriate orthotic for you? So we have multiple orthotics that we use um, based on your lifestyle and your, your needs. And we can get into that in much more detail. So I just wanted to show you a couple um, x-rays here. So this bottom one, the one on the left are barefoot. And the one on the right is <clears throat> with an orthotic in, okay? So as you're looking at this, this you can see this person on the left, bottom left. You see they've got a lower femoral head on this right side, okay? You know, there's about a seven millimeter difference here. And then it extends into their ilium. You can see the distortion that's happening there, okay? When you have that, you can see how the spine, here's your spinous right along here, it's shifted to the right of this plumb line. So when we put somebody in an orthotic, this is literally like, a matter of putting on a pair of shoes. This is what we get in terms of the balance that happens immediately. You can see that plumb line. Here, here, here's the pubic bone. You can see how the pubic bone was to the left over here. <clears throat> I guess I, I'm not sure if you see my, my pointer here. So I'm looking at the pubic bone here as it relates to um, the plumb line. And then we've got a lower femoral head here, a lower ilium here. And you can see how the spinous are on this side of this plumb line here, okay? So we put a pair of orthotics in and look at where the pubic bone is, much more along this plumb line. Look at the amount of leveling that takes place. You have the femoral heads. And we see, again, much more leveling happening right through here and we're getting more centered along this um, plumb line there. This is with an orthotic. So <clears throat> we can start to really assess, is there a femoral head discrepancy or is it a subluxation-based malalignment that's creating this distortion that we're seeing through your pelvis? Here's another individual. They had you know, about one, just, just under a two millimeter difference. They're lower on this left side here. <clears throat> if we sound more distortion, well, pretty similar. The ilium, you can see how their spinous are going to this side. So here's the spinous right here of the plumb line. Okay. So again, with the orthotic, what we see right, and here's their pubic bone. So with their orthotic, <clears throat> they get more centered along the pubic bone. So there's a shift that's happening. Okay. Um, but they're much more balanced at the femoral heads and we see much more balance to the ilium. We still see their spinous shifting, um, and there's just a component that uh, when you introduce an orthotic, you need to be in them consistently to help support correction of your subluxation. So what we see happening here is, you know, immediately a femoral head uh, shift. You see more balance along the pelvis and along that plumb line, especially when we look at the pubic bone. And what needs to happen are consistent adjustments, consistent spinal hy hygiene. And the beauty of an orthotic is it is passive support, meaning you don't need to think about it. You don't need to take breaks <clears throat> during your work day to do spinal hygiene or do corrective work. This is just something that's always working for you because you have them in. And that is going to help support correcting your subluxation patterns over time. So that's, that's amazing. Now, um, <clears throat> Let's go to the next one, because this is huge. So you can't see this, but she's got, this is a scoliosis, and she's got about a 38 degree curve here, okay? <clears throat> this one, okay, I'm sorry, I'm. this is not showing up very well. Okay, you look at the discrepancy here. So again, she's got a scoliosis here. 
You can see where her pubic bone is, okay? This is where the plumb line should be. This is her gluteal crease. So you can see how rotated she is. You know, she's lower on this left side. Um, I wish I could see that, but it's something like 19 millimeters on this, on here, and then it jumps up to 20, like seven at the ilium, okay? So when we put her in a pair of orthotics, this is orthotics alone. We haven't done anything with a lift. You see her curve goes from 38 to 28 degrees. That's massive. That's, <clears throat> again, you think about a scoliosis as a, a curve that's starting to fold over on itself over time, especially with the more degrees. So if we see a spine that straightens um, and takes less, um, we're seeing less curvature take place, that's, that's huge for this person. They're gonna be aging very differently. And they went from a 19 millimeter discrepancy to uh, just under seven or just under eight. So around seven here. And their ilium, it looks like went to 20. So you can see she's still shifted, not as much. I mean, here's her gluteal crease right here. There's a gluteal crease. So, I mean, she's much more balanced. This orthotic is going to work for her um, over time to put less stress on the lumbar spine. Because you've got, I mean, all the nerves that are exiting out here and here, where are they going? <clears throat> to your intestines, to your reproductive organs, urinary kidney bladder system, your kinetic chain, <clears throat> everything is in much more balance and much more improved function. So that's why, again, we're looking at the outward signs and looking at your posture, but we also wanna look at how is it impacting your spine? How's that kinetic chain and the forces that are impacted um, <clears throat> show up through your spine? So we wanna, I mean, again, we're looking at how <clears throat> over time is your spine aging, right? So, excuse me, wrong way. So the biggest thing is your, your toes should have ample space. So you'll see that there's a big uh, shift towards um, wide toe box docks, boxes, okay? So as you're looking at this, I'm gonna share my screen again. As you're looking at this, you can see, you know, this is not a narrow toe box. This is a wide toe box. I want my toes to have nice space in them. They can actually stretch out. Um, <clears throat> any shoe that narrows through theirs pushes the toes together. That's why I don't love dress shoes. Man, I used, I remember all those pointy shoes that women would wear. I would wear them pushing our toes together. Um, that's crowding the toes. It's giving us less proprioceptive input, less stability over time. Um, and because we wear them all the time. And so, you know, on the regular day in and day out for hours on end, um, we're not, <clears throat> you know, we see our toes start to deform over time. That's where you can have a bunion where a toe is, you know, pushing against the other toes. Uh, so we like a square wide toe box, <clears throat> a heel. If you're going to wear heels, a heel lower than two inches, as soon as you you know, get above that two inch mark, um, your arches are, are really in a stressed place. One inch of space between your longest toe and the tip of your shoe, okay? So, um, <clears throat> or excuse me, half inch of space between, so looking at the length of your shoe. You want arch support in all three of your arches. That's the beauty of the company that we work for. Uh, Foot Lovers has a patent for the three arch system. So that's where it's gonna be very different. Um, if you were to go to a podiatrist uh, compared to what we offer, number one is it's supporting the three arch system. So we're the only, or this is the only orthotic that supports that three arch system. Secondly, this is a soft orthotic. So um, most podiatrists use a hard orthotic. You, that heel strike alone generates force. So when you have a hard orthotic um, that amplifies the amount of force that travels into the knee, into the hip, and into the rest of the body. So we like a soft orthotic because we don't want to amplify that. Um, it should really be comfortable. That means that <clears throat> compared to a hard orthotic, that means that these will break down, but they should last um, 
they should last for some time. I've had a pair of orthotics that I've had for eight years. Uh, so it just depends on your activity level, um, how intensely you're on your feet all day. Um, we've seen people wear them out, but that's because they are on their feet uh, and intensely using their, um, you know, activity uh, level wise, they're, they're doing a lot. But there should be wiggle room for the toes, especially the big toe. Um, let's see. So just say no to high heels can agitate, agitate and cause plantar fasciitis. Two high heels, um, <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't go more than two hours at a time. Uh, so that'll, I mean, I see those marathon, those, those sprints done in stilettos, and it just kind of blows my mind because uh, awful, awful for balance. Uh, and it could, you know, the potential for injury is goes up. Uh, pointy toed shoes. We already went over this. We want to make sure that you've got a wide toe box. Um, <clears throat> and flat as a board footwear, like many summer sandals. Again, uh, those are not providing any support. Um, and you're walking around on synthetic surfaces. So we don't like those. What is the app? What is the recommended 10,000 steps a day? The average American is taking 5,900. So um, how you're walking and moving will play a massive role in the health and how you age over time. Um, the surfaces you're walking on, how, you, how those surfaces are supporting the arches will play a massive role. Uh, and so, um, <clears throat> you know, it's a straw that broke the camel's back. Typically we see wear and tear happens over a long time. Uh, and so you've got to understand you're in the you're in the long game right now. When you choose to wear an orthotic, it's yes, it'll help support you and you will feel better day to day, but you are really putting yourself on a different trajectory in terms of how you're aging. Um, and so, you know, I think it's really vital to have a barefoot regimen to support and activate your arches in a very healthy way and then have really great support. Um, when you're not on those natural surfaces. I know you've heard me say that before, but <clears throat> again, I mean, we're just not on natural surfaces very often. Uh, don't go by size alone. Different ma manufacturers size differently, plus the feet tend to grow larger as we age. Even with pregnancy, we can see women's feet can grow. Feet swell throughout the day by up to 8%. So do your shoe shopping toward the end of the day to ensure an ample fit and... Um, you know, wearing custom orthotics goes a long way. Uh, you know, our orthotics comes with a one-year warranty, um, and these are made to last. Uh, I think Dr. Scholl's um, is mass-produced. Yes, it's going to support you. Um, it's going to be better than nothing, uh, but I think those are made to, to literally be replaced every three to six months. You know, some people are wearing those for years, but the integrity of that material is meant to break down so that people will continue buying them. Uh, <clears throat> and so, you know, if, if nothing else, uh, I guess I would say if you haven't had, if you haven't have your, had your arches assessed, we need to absolutely assess your arches. We need to look at how it relates to what's happening with your x-rays. We need to reassess what's going on with your posture. Just because you don't have say ankle, knee, or hip pain doesn't mean that you wouldn't benefit from it. But certainly I think uh, this is, <clears throat> can be a really great game changer in terms of supporting your health and well-being uh, and help how you're aging. Uh, so if you have any questions, please bring them to us. Um, if you haven't, uh, you know, had a foot scan or you want to uh, circle back to this in conversation, check in with us. Um, but we're more than happy to have this conversation uh, because we think this is really a, a vital part of your health and well-being. So Dr. Mike and Ziegler, a modern family chiropractic, appreciate and love you. Thanks for being here today. And we'll see you. We'll see you uh, at the next workshop.